Hey everybody, welcome to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. We just got a look at the last film in the Skywalker saga, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. It's a pretty nebulous title. I have some theories on what it can mean, but I'll get into that at the end of the video. But first, potential spoilers for this and all other Star Wars movies are ahead. We're gonna break down the trailer as well as some of the stills the Lucasfilm shared today at the Star Wars Celebration panel. The cast and J.J. Abrams also offered a few plot hints that we're going to be talking about. First, we start in the desert, a favorite Star Wars setting. Rey has a new costume, and this one is fully white. The color of costumes is a not-so-subtle theme running through the Star Wars movies. Anakin always dressed a little darker than the other Jedi, while Luke went from white to gray to black to symbolize slipping toward the dark side. At the end of Return of the Jedi, a gray flap comes loose on his suit to symbolize that he's moving back toward the good. In The Last Jedi, Rey wears gray, showing that she could be moving more towards Kylo Ren, but now she's going full white hat. Anyways, Rey is looking nervous as Luke's words echo in her mind. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. This is likely Luke's force ghost communicating to Rey. He's quoting his two different Jedi masters, Yoda what you have and Obi-Wan. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic. Soon we see why she's nervous as Kylo Ren's fighter is bearing down on her. Notice, though, she's ready for combat and seems way more confident in her fighting abilities. In the panel, they sort of implied that Rey would have a few new Force abilities that we hadn't seen before, similar to Luke's Force projection in The Last Jedi. Then, one of the biggest reveals from the trailer is that Anakin slash Luke slash Rey's lightsaber has been repaired, so Rey must have learned something in those sacred Jedi. Jedi text. Although, in the celebration panel, Daisy joked that maybe Rey hadn't gotten around to reading all of them. To me, this implies that her skills aren't quite complete and she still has a lot to learn. Then we fade into this text, which is a nice nod to the original trailer for The Phantom Menace. It's a nice way to show that the saga is coming full circle. Now this does look an awful lot like Kylo Ren's ship, but there's no guarantee he's the one who's flying it. However, in the stills, we do see Kylo Ren flying his fighter. Notice, though, that in this still, his face is covered in pockmarks and burns. This could be from this fight in a burning forest where he slams someone to the ground. And judging by the primitive cloth and axe, I'm guessing this is some native to a planet that the First Order is conquering. Next, we see him patching up his helmet. In The Last Jedi, we had some hints that Kylo could turn good after his helmet was destroyed. This is a symbol of him moving further towards the dark side. I also wonder if embracing the dark side has taken a toll on him physically. In the Legends universe, Palpatine's body was slowly rotting away by dark side energy, so he created clones of himself. But I'll talk more about Palpatine in a little bit. Anyways, I wonder if these pockmarks on Kylo's face could be some kind of indication of the dark side having an adverse effect on his body. This could be the side of a new resistance base or some planet where the resistance is hiding. We don't know exactly when this movie takes takes place, except that J.J. Abrams said it does not start right after The Last Jedi, and Daisy Ridley let it slip that, quote, some time has passed. <laughs> so it could be that the Resistance has had time to organize into a larger military unit. Next, we see Finn and Poe in the desert. Also in the panel, John Boyega said that Finn is now a full-fledged member of the Resistance, whereas he was wavering a bit in the first two movies. He was also excited that for the first time, he gets a Star Wars-y costume, which you can see in this still. In another still, you can see Poe among a band of natives on this desert planet. Now, I don't think this is necessarily going to be Tatooine or Jakku. Although the mountainous ridges you do see in the background remind me a lot more of Tatooine than Jakku. So maybe there's some kind of old relic on Tatooine that they're all looking for, either some connection to Vader's boyhood or some kind of Jedi relic that Ben Kenobi might have hidden there. One constant you see on all the desert planets are these moisture evaporators. These bring moisture in from the air, and Luke grew up on a moisture farm on Tatooine. This is BB-8 and his new droid friend, Dio, not to be confused with Ronnie James Dio. And finally in this movie, we get the return of Lando Calrissian. He's in the cockpit beside Chewie for the first time since The Empire Strikes Back, when for some reason he was wearing Han Solo's clothes. There's a new character in the franchise, Janna, played by Naomi Aki. There's a lot of speculation that she'll be Lando's daughter. All she would say in the panel is that Lando gets around the universe. You look absolutely beautiful. But then, back to the desert where scout bikes are chasing a sand skiff. These vehicles are very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi. Just like J.J. Carbon copied A New Hope and Ryan Johnson imitated the structure of Empire Strikes Back, I think you're going to see a lot of homages to Return of the Jedi in this film, the biggest of which I'll get into in a second. Notice the two of them have C-3PO with them. Since 3PO is worthless in a fight and doesn't hack into things like R2 or BB-8, they probably brought him along to talk with the natives that we see in this still. Also, notice how the skiff is laden with crops or maybe some kind of merchant's goods. 
This tells me that they were probably spotted by the First Order and they just grabbed the nearest speeder to start off this chase. And notice these First Order jump troopers flying with their jetpacks, which has been in video games for years, but it's something we've not really seen in the films. This looks like an A-Wing being shot down beside a Star Destroyer. This one shows the whole crew of good guys together for only the second time in this trilogy. And in this scene, you see Resistance fighter Snap Wexley has returned. That's a new character beside him named Claude. Then we see someone holding this medal, which was awarded to Luke and Han at the end of A New Hope. This could be Rey, but I think it's more than likely Leia. J.J. Abrams said they were going to use some footage of Carrie Fisher shot for Force Awakens to give her a proper goodbye. This could be a deleted scene where she's mourning Han by holding the medallion he won in their first victory together. And here, when Luke says, We'll always be with you. I'm wondering if he's comforting Rey after Leia's death. Next, we see the whole gang together on a ridge. One detail that J.J. did disclose is that the heroes will all be together on a single adventure, unlike the first two films, which saw them screwing up in different locations. Then we see one of the trailer's biggest reveals, the wreckage of the Death Star. So is this Yavin 4 or Endor? Well, there's evidence to support both. If this is the same planet where this fight takes place, it could be Yavin 4, since these natives don't look like Ewoks. But I think it's far more likely that this is Endor. Again, you're gonna see a lot of references to Return of the Jedi in this film. Then Luke repeats his line from episode eight. No one's ever really gone. Which is meant to be endearing, but is followed by the biggest reveal of the trailer. <laughs> evil cackle of Darth Sidious himself, Emperor Sheev Palpatine. So how is this possible? Did the Emperor clone himself like in the Legends universe? Well, this doesn't necessarily mean he's alive. He could be appearing to Kylo Ren or Rey or both of them at the same time in a Force vision. But a possible Palpatine return does make me think that this is definitely Endor. If the Emperor did have remains, they would be among the wreckage of this Death Star. Maybe Kylo is after some dark side power and the Resistance is trying to get to it before him. I do think it's unlikely that he survived and has been chilling on Endor for 30 years. But what do you think about Palpatine's return? Let me know in the comments below. And then finally, we get the title reveal, The Rise of Skywalker. This surprised me since this film is supposed to end the Skywalker saga and they're all mostly dead, but the title could have a few different meanings. Number one, it refers to Kylo Ren and he'll renounce the dark side and take on the Skywalker name. Number two, Last Jedi's amazing reveal that Rey comes from no one is retconned and she'll end up being Ben's sister or Luke's kid. Number three, Luke has a kid that we didn't know about. This could be Jenna or some other new character. Does that sound stupid? Well, remember, if this movie is taking cues from Return of the Jedi, that movie also had a completely pointless Skywalker reveal. Leia is my sister. Number four, it could be referring to Anakin Skywalker. Concept art from Force Awakens showed that Anakin's Force ghost returns and kind of moves between Vader and Anakin's personas. There have been rumors that Hayden Christensen was returning for this movie to bring everything full circle. Or number five, a new Skywalker baby is born. How? Kylo Ren would influence the midi-chlorians to create life. That's not how the Force works. But what do you think? Tell me your title theories in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.